for those of you who are not familiar with what this uh, demo is about, uh, Eric and I kind of got together. Eric had a good question in one of the previous calls, which was, hey, I've got a, you know, I have a JavaScript web part, and I would love to see detailed instructions on how to convert a JavaScript web part into uh, a React web part. Uh, so uh, that's what we did. And, uh, it, we, you know, if you've ever seen Monty Python's kit where the scientists are building the world's funniest joke, uh, where they're not allowed to see, you know, all parts of the joke, otherwise they'll die because that's how funny the joke is. Um, that's kind of how we approach this presentation as well. Uh, you know, Eric did his web part using just JavaScript, and then I took his web part and I converted it to React. So uh, since Eric uh, is not here to present, I'll show you what his web part looks like. Well, it actually looks exactly like mine, but uh, uh, so hopefully you can see this uh, web part here, which actually takes uh, the uh, a GitHub username. So for example, if I put uh, Vesa here, No, don't show all of the data. No, just kidding. All right, well, I'll put mine there. You know, I don't, I don't like sharing my face, but so um, you know, uh, the the article um, and the code are actually found in the uh, SP Dev FX Web Part samples, uh, but there's a blog post uh, that's uh, arguably too long. But the blog post actually walks you through every single step of creating the SPFX web part, uh, copying the code, and uh, making some conversions. Luckily, I'll save you the reading. I will actually do that uh, right now in front of you. Uh, so why would I take a web part and convert it to React? Um, you know, why wouldn't I use uh, you know, Angular or, or you know, Knockout? Uh, and honestly, React is not necessarily any better than any of the other frameworks. Uh, but the one thing that uh, we are getting with React that would be a bit more uh, harder work if I was using no framework is that you are getting a separation of duties. Uh, you're able to separate the components, the presentation component, uh, the services that retrieve the data. Um, you're able to do that, and, and you know it makes it obviously easier to test. The other advantage that you're getting is instead of rendering the entire uh, web part every time any changes happen, you're able to actually render smaller sections of the web part uh, just by the way these frameworks uh, work. But probably the most important reason why you would use React is with React, you have the Fabric UI components, you have the PNP uh, reusable components, uh, which are readily available in React, and uh, sadly, uh, Knockout and Angular don't get as much love when it comes to uh, the Fabric UI components. So the only difference between the web part that Eric uh, built versus uh, my web part is I used a Yeoman generator. And at the end here, when it says, which framework do you want to use, I chose React when Eric chose a no framework. Uh, so this is kind of what the JavaScript uh, you know, version of the web part looks like. And by the way, you'll see at the bottom of every slide, I'm showing whether it's the JavaScript or the React component. Uh, so this is the JavaScript version of the web part that gets generated. Uh, that's Eric's code. Uh, and uh, you know the components are actually broken down into this. I'll compare the two in a second. So I'll, I'm trying to go really quickly here. Uh, this is the version, the React version of the web part, uh, and the components are broken down like this. But if you compare them side by side, and hopefully I'm not going so fast that the, uh, the Skype is not able to keep up here, uh, you'll see there's a few, there's a few things um, that are different, but you know, there's also a lot of commonalities between the, the JavaScript version, which is on the left, and the React version, which is on the right. First of all, it generates uh, a web part um, component. It also generates the JSON, uh, the, the manifest for both uh, web parts. Uh, it even renders kind of localized strings for both components. Where it's a little bit different is that in the uh, JavaScript web part, 
uh, all the code to to render the body of the web part is inside the this web part um, object here. But in the React version, it actually creates a component uh, which has kind of the uh, the uh, TSX file, which is responsible for rendering the body uh, of the web part itself. So if you look at uh, the JavaScript version of the render code, you'll see here that it's actually um, it, it's actually rendering the HTML inside inside the web part, and this is the HTML that we want to show. In parallel, if I show you the React version of this, the render code inside the web part itself is actually very simple, because all it's doing is it's saying create uh, call that that component that we saw earlier. Uh, and pass it the information that we need, which is the username and the uh, HTTP client so we can make requests. And uh, Patrick and Vesa, if I'm going too fast, please let me know. Uh, I know there's a lot of stuff to, to cover today. Uh, so this is the uh, React version of, uh, of the same rendering code. And uh, you know what you'll notice is inside the component itself, uh, I have the same code that renders the the uh, HTML, but if I put the two side by side, this is the JavaScript version on the left and the React on the right, you'll notice a few things. First of all, React is not happy with CSS, the CSS word class. It wants class name. Uh, in comparison on the JavaScript side, uh, it's using the word class here. So when we want to pass a CSS class name, we have to use class name. Uh, the other thing that you'll notice is I'm actually populating the data uh, by just passing a state object and uh, just putting the values of the state objects directly in HTML. Uh, in parallel, the uh, the JavaScript version, what it does is it actually has ID for every element. And then later in the code, it actually finds the elements by ID and it populates the HTML uh, of those IDs. Um, now, because uh, I'm using React, I'm also I also have access to the concept of state, and I'll show you the state uh, how I use the state uh, a bit later. But you'll notice here that I actually have uh, I'm saying if is loading, show the loading uh, you know render some loading placeholder. And if I'm not loading, the, and I have a user profile, then show the user profile. The values is loading and is user profile are coming from the state variables that I've created in React. And this is something that, uh, that React does actually really well for us. So the other thing that I want to show here is that at the bottom of uh, Eric's render code, we have get GitHub data. Uh, However, in the React code, I'm not calling get GitHub data in the render method. I'm actually calling it in two places. One is the first time the component is mounted, I call get GitHub use, uh, data. And if the properties of the web part are changed, uh, so the username uh, property is changed, I also recall get GitHub data. Um, everything else is actually handled uh, a bit later by the get GitHub data method. If you look at the get GitHub method in uh, Eric's JavaScript code, he's basically doing what I was talking about earlier. He finds every single element by ID, and then he, uh, somewhere later here, he actually populates that code with the values that he retrieved from the, the JSON. Uh, in comparison, in the React version, all I'm doing here is I'm actually calling my service that I've created uh, to get the user profile. Now, I didn't have to do that, but the, one of the values, again, as I said, of React is that you can componentize your elements. And so by creating a separate service object that, I, that has all the logic to call GitHub and retrieve the data, it makes it a lot easier. Um, and as you'll see later, if, if I want to change the look and feel of the web part, uh, I, I've really limited the amount of code I have to change. So if I look at the, what am I trying to show you here? Uh, the, Get, the GitHub uh, service, uh, I'm really doing the same thing that Eric was doing, where I'm actually calling uh, with this here, I'm actually creating a URL, and then I'm calling 
uh, with the HTTP client, I'm calling the web service. But what you'll notice is when I receive the data, I receive it as a, a GitHub user profile. Now, how did I create this class or this interface? I really went to uh, Postman. I called the uh, API. I used Vesa's uh, profile here, but I, I called the API. I copied and pasted the JavaScript, uh, the JSON that was returned. And then I use an add-in in a Visual Studio Code called Paste JSON as Code. And what it does, it uh, well, it does what it advertises. It actually created a uh, GitHub user profile class in my code that has all the attributes I'm looking for. So the great thing about that now is when I call uh, when I call the service, I'm able to actually just take the the JSON that's returned and uh, cast it as a GitHub user profile. Um, so in my state variable here, and I'm almost done, uh, the state variable, then really what I have is I have three things. I have, is it loading? Uh, what's my user profile? And if there's any error messages, uh, show me those error messages. If I go back to the get, GitHub data, uh, then what I'm doing here is once I've received the user profile information, uh, I set the state here uh, to contain the results I've received, and then I say, okay, I'm no longer loading. React automatically knows which parts of the of the page it needs to re-render, uh, and that's what, again, we're showing you here. So if I highlight again, if I'm loading, I'm showing a placeholder. If I'm not loading, I'm actually using the same... Um, state data that I received in my user profile, and I populated it. I'll just show you one last little thing. Uh, so I showed you the web part here that I created. Uh, I've actually submitted a, an update to the sample that's in the SPFX uh, samples. Uh, I created the second web part, which actually uh, is using the uh, Fabric UI and the PMP components. Uh, to do a slightly different version. I couldn't, I couldn't live with the look and feel of this web part. Um, I was uh, really not uh, proud of the look and feel of that web part. So what I did here is it's a version that uses the PMP components. If I, again, if I change the user here, um, it'll do the same code that we did before, except that the, the rendering of the web part is localized to that one TSX files that we, we demonstrated. So that was a super quick uh, review of, uh, of the code. Again, this is the link to the code and link to the blog post. I'm sure David Warner will submit a, a summary of this call very shortly. Thanks, everyone. If there's any uh, questions, I'll be uh, looking on the uh, Skype chat window. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Hugo. Uh, really cool demo there. Excited to see that. Um, and I think uh, a great comparison between kind of doing stuff uh, with and without uh, React or, or really kind of uh, applicable to any other sort of framework. So, uh, you know, very uh, valuable uh, demo. And thank you very much for that and for sharing that with us.